Hi there, welcome back to my channel. Today we're gonna to do a pick a card reading for what your spirit guides want you to focus on right now. We have pile number one, pile number two, and pile number three. So take a moment, close your eyes, see which one speaks to you, and look in the description box down below or in the comments to skip ahead to your specific reading and we'll see you there. Hi there, if you chose pile number one, this is your reading. So you chose the carnelian stone, which has a lot to do with our sacral chakra, our emotions, and love. So let's see what we have here. We have the ten of cups upright, ace of cups upright, mouse spirit tend to the small things, nine of pentacles and the ten of swords reversed so right off the bat your spirit guides want you to know to focus on love joy celebration with family and tending like see how she's tending to her garden and the mouse says tend to the small things the rue tending to your children your husband your partner your um, friends and family, tending to your relationships, tending to the little details, that is what is going to bring you the most abundance right now. Especially with this Ten of Swords in, the, in reverse. Ten of Swords, as you can see, she's overwhelmed by all of the things that there is to do. So what your spirit guides want you to know, especially because this is in reverse, is to not look so far ahead in the future. Stop worrying about all the things that need to be done. Take one step at a time and tend to the little things. When you scale down what you need to do and break it into little bite-sized pieces, it becomes so much easier to manage and then you can really benefit from the joy, love, abundance, and that's when real true prosperity will shine through for you, group number one. Um, and I can say this from my own, um, my own experience that this is a way to claim happiness now. These two cup cards are very, very positive cards. Um, that talk about love and joy and friendship and fulfillment. And so it's focusing on what you have today. It's focusing on gratitude. It's focusing on the small things you've completed. I have beaten myself up so badly in the past because I'm not where I want to be. And I'm thinking about all the things that I need to do to get to this like end goal. And it's through being appreciative of the things that I did today that I'm able to claim joy now. And I actually have another video about this. I'll link it down below if you're interested. But basically, your spirit guides want you to know that that's available to you too. And that's where you should be focusing your attention. If you have a to-do list and there's six things on that to-do list, you know, make sure they're small things. Don't just write work on website. Maybe work, write um, change title of website or update photo on website, you know, things that are bite-sized that you can accomplish and you can feel good about crossing them off your list instead of feeling overwhelmed by, you know, taking on too big of things all at once. All right, so I just shuffled this Beyond Lemuria deck and we have some cards that came out. Throat chakra, express your truth. Look at all these blue vibes, yeah. Express your truth. What is true to you today? Focus on these relationships. So express your truth to you, the ones you love. Express your truth to the people who matter the most to you. Be authentic. And with this butterfly, it really comes across as change is happening. That's how change will occur in your life. Ether, the seeming or the seamless unspeakable. So it is beyond what we can see and what is tangible. And look at all the blues again. It is through this process of focusing on gratitude, of focusing on our relationships, 
focusing on tending to the small things, tending to the garden and leaving behind the worries and the fears that what you cannot yet see will come to fruition. There is something you're manifesting, but it's through this process and focusing on the small things that it will truly come to light for you. So let's get a couple more cards here. I'm going to get some more cards from this Yogic Path Oracle deck. What does group number one need to focus on to enhance their understanding of this reading? Okay, Kriya. Kriya is a type of practice. I'm just going to read from the book for this one because it'll have a better description of Kriya. Because it is a yoga practice, but when people hear yoga, they just think it's like a certain type of movement, but it's actually so much more than that. So, 21. Effortless flow. Okay, yes. Life feels like a river that you're graciously floating down with ease. You're on the path to your dharma, your highest purpose, and doors are opening for you. One connection leads to another and things are moving at high speed. Kriya. Don't feel overwhelmed. Ten of swords reversed. Do not feel overwhelmed. This is how life is meant to be experienced. When you're in Kriya, everything requires far less effort. The universe is propelling you in the direction of your dharma and providing you with assistance to fulfill the very important role you play. You no longer have to push, but rather can surrender to the great forces at play. Keep up the flow. Don't lose sight of your greater goal. You're uplifting the vibration of the planet. Wow, that's really powerful. Yeah, so, and look at it. This cup is overflowing. It's overflowing with abundance. So when you speak your truth, when you have faith that you are creating in attunement with the universe and you focus on the small things you can do today with gratitude, then life is in complete harmony and flow. So your spirit guides are telling you, you are in flow, don't need to worry, you can let go of the worry, and you can focus on all the things that are happening for you right now, because there's an abundance of things that are flowing into your life, group number one. So it's a really positive message. I'm just gonna get one more card for you today from this healing mantra deck. And it will be kind of like a guiding mantra for the rest of the next few months. Invoking self-realization. Each breath confirms how awake I already am. It's also blue with a butterfly. <laughs> so that's two blue butterflies and there's a lot of blue in this reading. So a lot of emotions, really focusing on your throat chakra. The, the throat chakra is represented by this light blue and blue and is also representative of our emotions, our creation, um, space, ethers. That goes well with the throat chakra because the throat chakra is the element of space which is beyond our understanding. It is vast. It is all encompassing. And that is what you are creating right now. So step into that. Stop worrying and focus on the love and light. Group number one, that's all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Make sure to subscribe down below if you haven't already to be updated with new content. We'll be doing tarot readings every Tuesday so you can catch them here. See you in the next one. Bye. All right. For those of you who chose group number two, this is your reading. You chose the geode here, which represents the great womb where we birth 
and go in to create. So let's see what cards you have for this reading of what your spirit guides want you to focus on right now. We have the Queen of Cups upright, Ten of Wands upright, Groundhog Spirit upside down, Knight of Wands reversed, and the Empress reversed. So what I can tell right off the bat is that you have a lot of emotions flowing through you right now and there's a lot of things going on in your life that have you feeling a little bit overwhelmed and it's like you have these things that have um, hurt you and you're not ready to let go of them yet. You're holding on tightly to them, onto these beliefs, these circumstances, these people maybe even, depending on who you are reading or listening to this reading, and your inability to let go and move on at this time is has you feeling a lot of deep emotions, and it's taking your feminine energy a little out of whack. Um, you're not able to fully receive. I actually just posted on my Instagram the other day, said you have to let go in order to receive. And because if you think about it, if my hand is full, my hand is full, I'm holding tightly, I can't let go. How is anything supposed to be placed in my hand? I have no room for it. So in order to receive, you must let go and create space to receive newness. So you're in the process of alchemizing the pain, the things that have happened in your life that you're holding on to, the beliefs that don't serve you, the people who don't serve you. You're in the process of coming to terms with that and actually being able to alchemize and transform and heal those things and turn them into positive life-changing circumstances. So what your guides are trying to tell you is that now is the time to focus on letting go and making room for the new, making room for beliefs that support you, making room for beliefs that serve your higher purpose, making room to receive love, to receive joy, to receive abundance. You have to let go first in order to receive those things, group number two. And you'll know what what you need to let go of. You know deep down right as I say this. But you're kind of in this transitory stage where you almost don't want to let go. And I can kind of understand that because there's things in my life that even though I know I need to let go of them and I know they're not serving me, there's a part of me that wants to hold on and wants to feel right and just. And it's... It definitely isn't good for your mental health, especially if you know that it's not serving you. But I totally com or sympathize and have compassion for the inability to let go with ease. It's it's sometimes it's easier to hold on to the pain. It's easier to hold on to the beliefs. It's easier than doing the work of letting go and finding new ways of being and finding new friends and finding new partnerships and finding new uh, beliefs that serve you because it can be a very daunting task but I promise it'll be very rewarding for you group number two so let's see what cards we get to establish this a reading we have the beyond Lemuria oracle deck all right so we have the portal keeper <laughs> Cute little alien kitty. Our ancient future. I just love these cards. Look how funky they are. Lots of fish and like um, water life and bubbles. So lots of water energy here. And the crown chakra. Wow. 
All right. So this is letting you focus once you let this go on opening to different forms of knowledge. So our crown chakra is a lot to do with how we receive information from our spirit guides, from the ethereal realm, but also just information and knowledge in general. And what I talked about, holding on to these beliefs that aren't serving, and you focus on, as you focus on letting those go, that crown chakra will open and then it will be more receptive. Remember that I said that receptive energy of the feminine energy is a little bit off balance. So you'll be more receptive to receive guidance, intuition, um, steps to take next. And that will lead you into the future. With this, the Portal Keeper card, I don't even know what to say about this, honestly. It's making me think of like the past and the future all wrapped into one. It's like this very ancient um, knowledge that you would get from like an Egyptian time, but then this like very futuristic approach with this cute, colorful alien kitty. So it's like remembering that you can gain knowledge from the past and you can use, and this is what I mean by alchemizing, you can use what you've been through as lessons. You can take them into the future with you, but don't let them dictate who you are or the future you create. Allow them to transform you and to bring new knowledge and to bring new energy and new light into the moment so you can be shaped by both the past and the future and that will create this perfect balance and harmony for you to move forward where you can receive you can give and you can create the reality that you're looking to create so let's get another card from this Yogic Path Oracle deck. Mm, see what kind of messages your spirit guides want to give you right now. And I'll read from the book on this one. Nice hearty message for you. Group number two. Ooh. Your cards are just flying out like crazy today, group number two. So we have... Svadhisthana Chakra. So we have Svadhisthana Chakra, which is your sacral chakra, which is where your feelings, your emotions, your femininity, your ability to receive, and your ability to connect with others is located. This is located in your pelvic bowl and is represented by the color orange and the element of water. So it's a very emotional chakra. So this goes very well with this reading as in you have this queen of cups here. You are overflowing with emotions right now. You have a lot of things that you are going through that you're processing and that you're ready to alchemize so that you can let go and you can express yourself outwards. So let's see what the book has to say on this one. Sacral chakra, the chakra of creativity, abundance, and pleasure. Let these words be your mantra. Find what fills your cup and pour it all over the canvas of life. Yes, let go. Let it flow. This is the time to put your creative projects first, the very ones you've had on the shelf for months. This is also the time to work on shifting your relationship with money and see it as an energetic tool that can bring you great freedom. And this is also the time to focus on pleasure. What makes you feel turned on? Learn more about Tantra and cultivate Shakti, the divine feminine energy within, right? See, this is the feminine energy. It's out of balance right now. You want to cultivate that femininity and be open to receive and to be in the flow. Dance around your living room and luxuriously oil your body. Treat yourself the way you would love for your life's greatest love. Beautiful message. We'll get one more card 
from the Healing Mantra deck, a mantra to move forward with during this time, what your spirit guides want you to live by. Interesting, you guys got a very similar card to the last pile. So, invoking self-realization. Each breath confirms how awake I already am. Invoking self-realization. Each breath confirms how awake I already am. Beautiful. Yes, you're already awake. You're already aware of what needs to change. You're already aware of what you need to let go. That's all the messages I have for you today. Group number two, I hope you enjoyed this reading. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up if you liked it and subscribe down below if you haven't already to be updated with new content. I do pick a card readings every Tuesday on this channel, so we'll see you in the next one. Bye. All right, for those of you who chose group number three, this is your reading. You picked this citrine point, which all has to do about our solar plexus action and fulfilling confidence and action in our life. So we have the six of wands upright, nine of wands reversed, starfish spirit open to infinite possibility, knight of swords upright, and the emperor upright. So... Right off the bat, your guides want you to know that you are to focus your energy on what you want to create right now. It is not something you need to fight over with this nine of wands in reverse. There is no, you don't need to defend anything. You don't need to have your guard up. It is let your guard down, open to infinite possibility because there is so much abundance that is available to you right now, especially with this emperor card, the six of wands. She is a victorious. She has just claimed a victory and she is off to celebrate. The knight of swords charges forward with ideas and he is ready to take action on his goals. The emperor sits tall on the throne with a sense of security and power in creating the life that he wants. And there's lots of little hints of red sprinkled in through here, which is about <clears throat> standing strong and confident and in their passion. So your guides want you to know right now to claim your right to take up space. Claim your right to go after your desires. Follow your passions and be open to the fact that your passions will bring you abundance. It is not about chasing success. It is not about chasing material gain. It is about chasing what it is you desire the most in your heart and you will claim it if that is what you focus on if you let your guard down you stop listening to what other people are telling you and you don't feel like you need to defend your decisions and you just focus on your goal bullseye all right i keep getting phone calls so hopefully i can stay in the flow here <sighs> Where were we? So we're talking about going after your passions, fulfilling your desires, and not worrying about the monetary gain. That will all come in divine timing if it's something that you really want. Because no matter what we focus our attention on and go after, we can create it. But the thing is, everything will come with downfalls. Everything will come with challenges. So when you're going after something for the money alone, when you have those challenges, when you have those downfalls, it's going to be a lot easier to give up and quit because you're not feeling it, because you're not loving what you're doing. Whereas if you go after something because you love it and you stop beating yourself up about how many followers you get or what material success looks like in your life right now and you just focus on service serving others doing what you love and being in the flow everything will work out and you'll be able to withstand the downfalls you'll be able to withstand the failures and you'll see them as lessons learned because it's something that you love and enjoy for instance my son loves to scooter and he probably falls and fails tricks about a 
you know, hundreds of times before getting them right, and he gets back up and does it again because it's something he loves. Now, if I failed a scooter trick, I would not get back up and do it again because I don't care about that. So it's about doing something that you love and lights up your life, and that's what your spirit guides want you to focus on right now. We have loving compassion. Yes, have compassion for yourself and have compassion and love for what you're doing, for being able to process the failures and the downsides with an air of what am I learning from this? What is this trying to tell me? Okay, and then we have healing. Beautiful. Through this process, through focusing on your passion, through letting go of the naysayers, not caring what other people think, and having compassion for yourself when you fall down, having compassion for yourself when you mess up, having compassion for yourself when you try something new and it looks funny or silly or you make a fool of yourself. That is how true healing will occur because you'll learn to love yourself a little bit more with each failure, with each setback, with each thing that goes wrong. You can fo refocus on your bullseye and you can go after it and you can create the life that you truly desire. So I feel like there's a lot of action being taken right now and your spirit guides really want you to focus on taking action in your life, taking action towards your goals and really make sure your goals are in alignment with your true purpose and your true desires. We're going to get another card from the Yogic Path Oracle deck and I'll read from the book on this one. It's an absolutely beautiful deck see what they want you to hear right now taking action towards your passions so we have Radha let's look in the book and see what the message for you today is I'll be learning with you today as well. I haven't heard of Radha before. Okay. Goddess of passionate love and longing. Oh, look. That goes with loving compassion so well. You have a longing. You have a longing within you to follow something in your heart. You have a heart's desire. And it will be victorious. You just need to focus on it and believe in yourself. It says... Are you in love? You very well may be soon. Radha is the goddess of euphoric bliss and deep surrender when you gaze into the eyes of your lover. She is the compassionate lover of Krishna who gave up everything to be in his arms. Radha represents the desire to merge with your beloved and lose yourself in the utter ecstasy that is love. If you aren't already in love, it's well on its way and already occurring all around you. Allow yourself to lose yourself in the divine dance of romance, for love is just an experiencing your own soul in another body. Beautiful. So for some of you, this will be actual love. This will be going after what you're passionate about might be another person. For some of you, it might be a actual project, like a passion project that you fall in love with. Maybe it's like volunteering with young children or starting some sort of movement that you're really, really passionate about. And then you find other people who are passionate as well. And you find love in a member uh, of community members. And then for some of you, because remember, this is a general reading, it will be actually finding that person who helps you to feel full and whole and loved. But remember, no other person is responsible for that. That is, you must cultivate that. And when you do, you are worthy. We'll get one more card from the Healing Mantra Oracle deck as a little bit of a guiding mantra through this time. Through this time of love and friendship and healing. So exciting, group number three. Okay, expanding inner power. 
very appropriate. And another yellow, so it's all about the solar plexus chakra, really taking action and moving forward. Expanding inner power. I am my most powerful when my creativity is given a voice. Yes, I really feel like for some of you, this is going to be a journey of creating the life you desire through going after your passion. So don't forget to give your creativity voice. Stop defending yourself. Stop fighting to be heard by other people and just voice your opinion authentically and create the life you desire without asking permission. You don't need to ask permission from anybody, group number three. This is all I have for you today. I hope you enjoyed this reading. Make sure to give it a big thumbs up if you liked it. Subscribe down below if you haven't already. I'll be posting new pick-a-cards each Tuesday, and we'll see you then.